Good evening and welcome to the Indie Voice Show, where artists can listen, learn, and grow with knowledge empowering success. And now, here is your host, singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, Miss Wendy Hicks. We are here at WLVS Listen Vision Studios here on Georgia Avenue. Uh, welcome. Welcome, you guys. I have my very special guest, co-host, and friend, Mr. Lorenzo Zoe Miller. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Good. Finally got you here. <laughs> finally, finally. <laughs> this has been kind of in the works for a minute now, so I'm glad that you were able to take the time to come and, you know, interview, answer some questions sing some songs. I mean, no doubt, no doubt. you guys are in for a special treat. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. So to, today we're going to, we have quite a bit to talk about. Uh, we want to talk about how important it is to create your own opportunities. So we're going to get a chance to talk about your, the jazz segment that you have going on mm -hmm. to, uh, again, promote and create opportunities. We're going to talk about how important it is, the business of music, how to make sure you know, it's okay to have, you know, friendships, but when it comes to business, you have to make sure you have all your ducks in a row. <laughs> and then we're also going to talk about um, just some of the experiences that you've had as an artist. And also, you've had experiences behind the scenes because you also do sound, right. which is very, very important. Very, very important. Very so we have quite a bit to cover today, and we're going to jump right into the show. Let's have it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for those of you that are new to the show, I am an affiliate of the Indie Bible, which is, uh, which is an online resource for independent artists that, um, that want, are looking for information. They have articles. They have um, a database where if you are interested in finding promoters or radio stations in different areas, then you can just go to the directory and put in like your genre of music and specifically what you're looking for and it will provide that information for you. So we have, um, and so from that, I have an artist quick tip segment that I like to, where I like to share information. And one of the articles that I came across, which was really interesting, it's about getting your music played on the radio. Mm. And, um, and I honestly, you know, one of the good things there, there are many that I've learned from doing this show. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly learning from, from the experiences of the artists that I have on the show, but also when I'm doing research to, to find information to bring back to the audience, I'm constantly learning. And one of the things we talk about is trying to get out of the D.C. metropolitan area. You know, it's okay to, you know, to do your thing here, but, you know, for those of us artists who have projects out or working on projects, you want to get out, you want the world to hear your music. And, um, and one of the ways that you can do that is setting up like a radio promotion. Right. And, um, and I didn't quite understand the significance of that. So depending on what your what your primary goal is. Like if your goal is to be a worldwide artist and you want to get your music played worldwide and you want to set up a tour, then they, this article, and I'll post it on my Indie Voice page, then they suggest that you hire a, a radio promo company that already has established relationships with radio, um, pro with radio shows, radio stations, with program directors, and so they can kind of get you in that way. The caveat to that, though, is that, of course, there is a cost, and it gets pretty expensive. Like, if you do an eight-week run, it could cost you up to $2,400. So it can be costly but effective because, again, it gives you an opportunity. Once you identify, you know, you, you find um, the, the promo company that specializes in your genre, mm -hmm. they, and they, in turn, will find the, the radio programs that uh, format specifically for your style of music. And so, again, they do all the research for you. So that's kind of one less thing that you have to worry about. And they have relationships with some of the, um, some of the venues in the area where you're interested in going. So it's easier to kind of target. So the other strategy though, if you're an artist that is looking to kind of start, you know, near home, like if you're region specific, if say you're just starting out and you're interested in staying on the East Coast, well, then that's something that you can, you know, kind of do on your own, but it takes a lot of work. Like if you have a team, and of course we talk about how important it is to have a team, 
then you can get on the phone and you can call some of the radio stations and again, um, and establish relationships because that is important. Establish relationships with the program directors and um, get your music played and then you identify your target um, audience and market and then you seek to you know get out and start performing there. Again, this article, it's about two pages long so I know that there's a lot that I skipped over but the gist of it is it just talks about how important it is to incorporate the radio uh, promo in your marketing. And uh, so I was like, okay, that's something to think about. Because, you know, again, it's important. It's one of those things you kind of know, but you don't know until you read it. Like, oh, it's that aha moment. Right. So now, are you, are you working on a project currently? Well, I'm working on a single, what you're going to hear today. But hey. um, we're doing everything as singles. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, we made compile them all together, but we're going to work on all the singles I have, like the gentleman I have here tonight playing with me, he's going to produce some songs on the, on the CD, so I'm doing a bunch of artists who's going to come in and just produce some songs, and we're going to just put them all out as singles, but we may put them all in as one project, Okay. but basically okay. that's how I'm doing it, you know, for this go around. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that, your strategy for pushing your project out, mm -hmm. Once we really sit down and start um, answer, um, the, the Q&A session, but I wanted to know, like, in terms of your end goal with, um, with your music, once your project is done, do you, do you have, like, your whole radio promo thing in line? Have you thought about you it? Know, Wendy, to be honest, you know, I'm like the guy that just, like, take his project and, and pull it out of the trunk. Old school? Old school. I mean, <laughs> like, I'll have it with me when we do the shows. You know, I'll set up at the shows, but, you know, Fives of Radio is so hard to break into that, mm -hmm. that market, like you were saying, so hard to break into that market because, you know, a lot of times your song don't get chosen by anybody that's here. Right. You, you be somebody from out of state somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. so you really don't want to go there. They don't know anything about you, so it's, it's really who you know. Absolutely. You know, who you know. If you know somebody, you know, that they say, hey, they can call out that place out of state and say, mm -hmm. okay, you need to really take a listen to this instead of taking your stuff and throwing it in the wastebasket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it happens. Right. So basically, you know, I employ people, you know, if you can do that, that stuff, you know, get all these marketing and stuff like that, employ that. But I say, just rock your thing. Mm -hmm. Do it here. You got too many social medias, you know. And by saying that, like I had just came off a tour mm -hmm. with these two guys they from out of New York. Mm-hmm. They started out with a YouTube channel, got their followers up, then YouTube would watch the YouTube actually monitors that stuff. If mm -hmm. you don't think they do, they actually monitor. These guys were so big on this YouTube, so they said, y'all have these followers all over the country, we're going to do a tour. So I was on tour with them from New Jersey all the way across to L.A. Oh, my goodness. And okay. before I went on tour, it was sold out. So okay. these guys got so big, and YouTube sponsored it. Right. They paid for everything. Nice. So I would say rock the social media. Rock okay. and art. I okay. mean, you know, get your, get your Facebook, get your Instagram, get your Snapchat, mm -hmm. put your face out there. Right. Well, uh, ultimately, and you're right. I mean, it's not a one-size-fits-all kind no. of strategy mm -hmm. when you're looking to market yourself. Not at all. But, again, it's always nice to, to be equipped with the information and know what your options are so that when you decide what's best for you, then you're at least, then you know. Right. So, the, again, that was the, um, the artist quick tip segment, and that was taken from the Indie Bible. If you want to know more information about the Indie Bible, you can either go to IndieBible.com or if you go to my website, WendyRHicks.com, then I have some banner pages at, um, at the end of, of each page, which will direct you to the Indie Bible. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to get started with the Q&A. We've already kind of started to kind of tease you, a little teaser in there. Uh, but, <laughs> but we're going to come back, and uh, we're going to get to know more about Mr. Lorenzo Zoe Miller.
down to paradise At least it's not for me But the wind is right, we can sail away Find tranquility Oh, the canvas can do miracles Just you wait and see Believe me It's not far to never, never land No reason to pretend That if the wind is right We can find the joy of innocence again Oh, the canvas can do miracles Just you wait and see Believe me It's the best of me when I'm sailing, yeah. All caught up in the reverie, every word is a symphony, won't you believe in me?
And we are back. And again, so we went on and ran the Have You Heard segment because we don't want, we want to just keep going straight through the interview and get to the singing part of the show. So the um, Have You Heard segment, that is um, where, because this is a visual show, we like to um, show as much visually as we possibly can. And one way is to like show some of the videos that highlight, you know, independent artists that either I come across or sometimes people contact me and ask me, well, have you heard of so-and-so? So we developed a segment called Have You Heard? And hence, this is part of that. And again, that was Silver Logan Sharp, DC's own, Duke Ellington's own. Um, that was her remake of Sailing, and it was absolutely beautiful video. For those of you on Facebook Live, hi, Sam. Hi, Herbert. For those of you on Facebook Live, make sure you um, go back and watch the, the show or go to YouTube and you can see it for yourself. So here we are. Zoe, as friends call you, Zoe. You know something? <laughs> Let's talk about Zoe. Okay. For the longest time, I've been Lorenzo. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take this to credit it to some, mu some local musicians here you know, that, um, that I work with. I had some guys in the band that work with me for years playing with me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that they were advocate producers. And when I started working with them and everything, they just called it, started calling me Zoe. Okay. Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. And I was like, Zoe. So, <laughs> but you know, a lot of people use Lorenzo, mm -hmm. Lazo, that type of thing. So, this, it just stuck. Mm -hmm. It just started calling me Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. But this was happening probably about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was never called Zoe before, but now I'm Zoe. Okay. So that's what I am. Well, I saw in your bio it says your friends call you Zoe, so I said, okay, well, I, I consider myself a friend, so I'm going to call you Zoe. Okay, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my yes. goodness. So I had to, for those uh, those of you watching, I had to remind Zoe, I don't really know how many years ago this dates back to. But I put him on the spot and asked him if he actually remembered how we met or when we met. And, you know, we meet so many people, yes. But um, I, years ago, I started an entertainment company. Flipside Entertainment uh, was, was a, um, you know, promote, promoting shows, concerts around the D.C. area. And there was a, an event center called CFE mm. off of Marlboro Pike. And my, one of my first productions, and someone had referred you, I can't remember who, but it was time to do sound check. And, you know, you get up there, you'd be like, one, two, test. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you just started singing, and I'm like, almost like a mini concert. I was like, uh, good Lord. That was the first time I had ever met you and heard you. <laughs> I know some people just laughing when they hear it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so even, you know, um, and we'll get to know more about you. Again, I read your bio, and you started singing you know at a very young age and mm -hmm. grew up in the church a lot of us you know did that um and again my first association with you was through sound doing sound so were you uh, obviously you could sing back then but were you doing were you singing professionally back then or was that kind of something that happened later no i just just you know, she, she did, you know, I don't know how far back that was. Yeah, so, it's been at least 15 know. years, I Okay, think. I'm going to let everybody know right now. This year marks my 30 year. Oh, my goodness. 30 years of, of performing. Mm -hmm. So I want everybody to look out. So you too. started when you were five? <laughs> yeah, I started when I was five years old. Uh-huh, so uh-huh. Now I'm 35. Uh-huh. So I want everybody to look out for that. Yes. Look out for that. 30 year, I'm doing a 30 year anniversary coming this year. So. Nice. Okay, so you're setting that up. We're setting that up. Okay. We're setting that up right as we speak. Mm hmm As we speak. So it's going to be at a location near you. So look out for that. Okay. So yeah, go back to your story now. What you saying? All right. So again, um, that was my first introduction to you. And, uh -huh. um, and of course, like through social media, I have, you know, followed your career and seen some of the things that you've done. Um, and one of the things that I'm, I'm really excited about is, you know, we talk on this show about how, you know, especially as independent artists, you have to create your own opportunities. You can't just wait for the phone to ring. You can't wait for a promoter to call you and right. say, hey, I want you to do this gig. So you have found a niche in terms of having a night, the Mo, Mo Jazz Wednesdays. Mo Jazz Wednesdays. I started that probably about, uh, say about two years ago mm -hmm. at, uh, at a local venue. So it was just that um, 
the way that st stuff used to be. You know, there used to be a time that you can go into one venue and you see all the hot cats come out. Mm -hmm. We kind of stayed away from that now because everybody's just doing their own thing. Right. You know, doing their own thing. So I said, oh, how can I bring this back? Let me start this more jazz Wednesdays. And I called a bunch of friends. I knew that I couldn't pay them what they were worth. Mm -hmm. But I called them up and said, hey, man, I'm going to start this more jazz Wednesdays, man, and have y'all come out and perform and then have other musicians come out and check us out. And they say, hey, I'm down. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I called, I, I didn't turn away from no one. Mm -hmm. So everybody did it. So I said, I'm going to keep this series going. So right now, we, we started it back up. We did two weeks. Um, this is like my second week. And um, but right now, we're looking for another venue now. So we're probably going to take this Wednesday off and come back the following Wednesday. Okay. At a different we, We're in negotiation right now. So that, that's not going to take much. But yeah, I just wanted to get that camaraderie back together with right. us as musicians, you know, going out. Like, anybody who know me, I go out and support everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you do. You can play a fiddle, I go out there and see that, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you probably see me just going anywhere, any, just sitting in the back, just checking everything out. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's what we need to get back to, us as musicians here in this area, just supporting each other. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. That is important. It's very important. Well, kudos to you for being able to get people together, because now... Um, one of the things that I've noticed in terms of uh, I, people are busy and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the full time musicians, it's all about making the money. Making money right. So, you know, f going back to for the love of for the love of music and just being able to get folks together. Mm -hmm. I actually had a musician that told me once and it kind of threw me off. But because um, I had an idea that I was tossing around and he said, you're not going to get musicians that are, that are, are going to come out and support other musicians if they're not performing. I'm like, that is crazy. I mean, and again, I, I didn't realize that people even thought that way. But that's pretty yeah. unfortunate because it is so important um, to support. Mm -hmm. How do you know um, who's out there? Like, I'm constantly seeing people. I mean, we're not going to know everyone. But if you stay within your own group and, and not, you know, go out to support other people and see who else is out there or cross pollinate, you know, fans, mm -hmm. then you, we're just going to be stuck in our, in those clicks. clicks. It's going to be stuck in those clicks, but you know, I mean, like I say, social media, they got pages on here to just show you what's happening. Mm -hmm. They show you what's happening. And, um, I'm going to give a shout out to a couple of friends of mine in that, um, that on Facebook and they do a Wednesday night thing every Wednesday, the Kim and newbie show. I don't know if you know them. No. You need to look them up. Kim and Newbie Show, they, they always have it. It's kind of like this platform, but they always let you know what's going on in the city. And they always show me love on Wednesdays. They come out and say, hey, you need to go out to Mojazz Wednesdays. Nice. And sometimes they come on location and do that, too. You say, Kim, yeah. I need to, yes. Well, I do that from time to time. I'll go yeah. out and interview artists. Um, I've done that, and that's pretty yeah, they cool. Come out and they, come back. Their live, they do their live thing on location, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. They're about to share the love. They don't have to. Right. They do it. Are they musicians as well? You know, they're not. Okay. They but just love they're, music. They're just the lovers of music, you know, so I give them shout-outs, you know, whenever I can, but it's all about, you know, us coming together. Mm -hmm. And, like, you started out in the segment talking about how do we get to that next plateau. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it takes us because... It's so many hot musicians here in the city. Yes. I can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. Like, I got I got some guys to play with me. Young cats. I, I twice their age, but they are so, so, so sharp in this music. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just like it's getting, they're getting better and better and better and better mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. I, when I think that I found somebody who, who's hot, and I said, you can't get no hotter than that. Uh -huh. The next thing you know, this, <laughs> This 12 year old coming down here, you know, is playing, you know, but yes. yeah, like my whole band is, I think all of them are under 25. Mm hmm. Pretty close to you. They, they, they young cats, but they hot. So, you know, and I do that. I, I employ them because, like, people who know, if they come out to a, a Zoe Miller show, you're going to see some hot cats. Mm hmm. If you're looking for a hot keyboard player, a hot drummer, come to my show. Mm hmm. <laughs> you know, they going they gonna to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be there to show. I think that I've helped out a lot of musicians and had places for people to come and hear them because a lot of times you don't have, you know, a places for you to play and say, you just say, I'm a hot drummer, why don't you come check me out? Right. 
I'm good. Let me play. No, come to the show and see him live. Mm -hmm. Come to my show and see him live. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just the nature of the beast. Okay. Yes. So now when you are, now that you're looking for another venue, what are some of the things that you look for when you're, when you're scouting for venues? Ambiance is very important. You know, because mm -hmm. a lot of times I, I, they're at places like restaurants and stuff like that. Ambiance. Food, of course. Mm -hmm. Number one, service. Mm -hmm. And location. Well, let's talk about ambiance, though, because you kind of set some of that up yourself. Yeah, you know, but yeah. <laughs> there have been some places, man, that, you know, it's by me having, you know, the production company, you know, and, you know, it's, it's funny that I think about this and when people, I had started this back in the day. I guess we can probably get into how I got into doing sound. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. when I was doing, uh, when I started out, they came in and nobody had been doing these local shows. Everybody playing in the dark. I was like, oh, man, I'm gonna make this thing look like, like nice. I'm gonna put some lights and everything and everything. And then I overheard somebody. He's like, look at this. He's doing too much. This ain't such and such. And this is <laughs> this is like a number of little restaurant. Look at all he only. You know. mm -hmm. But you gotta understand that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I told a person, I said, now what if you was to go to Beyonce concert and she sat up there with just a white light the whole the whole time? It would right. make a difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, she'd be singing the same thing, but visual, right, is is important. And that's why I like I like to just go all out. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm doing stuff like that. So now, how did you get into sound? Then now that you brought that up. All right. Back in the day, I don't know if you remember, um, we were doing a, a weekly show at um, Bailey's, formerly TJ Remington's in Silver mm -hmm. Springs. Oh my goodness, that's going way back. That's going way back, way mm -hmm. back. And uh, um, a fellow musician of mine, I can say his name, Kenny Allen, he played with Spur of the Moment. Yes, shout out to Kenny. I don't have my bell. What happened to my <laughs> bell? Yeah, shout out to Kenny. Kenny Allen played with Spur of the Moment, mm -hmm. and um, he had had a little small system, and he was doing sound for us you know he had a little small sound system he was doing sound and you know after a while i said man come on man let's just sell me this thing you ain't trying to get in it he, he said i kept on top of him he just kept saying man sell me this little sound system you don't need it you mm -hmm. know, just me sell it. so he finally broke down sold it to me so i was doing my own sound mm -hmm. at the time you know and then other musicians would come in and say man your sound sound good who's doing sound for you mm -hmm. i was like that's mine i mean we do our own stuff so you rent it out I said, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I can't read it. I'm right. talking to my I said, man, how, can, how much can I get for a little sound system? He said, man, you can probably get a couple hundred dollars for it. Uh -huh. I said, all right. I told him, I said, man, give me a couple hundred dollars, man. He, he said, bet. So <laughs> the word got around to that I had a little sound system. I was doing sense. I was renting the thing out. And then once you do this sound thing, anybody who does sound will let you know that once you get into the sound thing, you get a bug. Really? It's a bug that you get. You start getting it. The next thing you know, you're like, what else can I get? Then you go and upgrade, upgrade. So I upgraded, kept upgrading over the years, and mm -hmm. still rented out. I went apart about 10 years and didn't have a business card and have nothing. Mm -hmm. People just called me word of mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's how I started out, you know, and then now, you know, I'm, I have enough stuff to do arena stuff. Now, and I saw you, you were one of the first people that I saw controlling sound from a daggone iPad. Oh, really? I never saw, I was like, my good, well, you know, technology today. Yeah. Woo. So I had no idea. iPad, and I, I can control it with my iPhone, things like that, because, you know, a lot of times I do my own sound, like when I do these small venues. You mm -hmm. know, if I need some adjustment, I just grab my phone. And sometimes I, I'll tell people, say, look, I'm, I'm just... Then y'all know I'm not being rude. Mm -hmm. I'm adjusting the sound. <laughs> I'm not texting somebody on the middle of the show. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you end up at places like Blues Alley that provide the sound, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, let it, I mean, they have an engineer there, so. Yeah. They have an engineer there. It's funny you say, you know, Blues Alley, because, you know, that was my, my first uh, major artist I did there, engineer mm -hmm. for me, first major artist. Mm -hmm. It was... Najee, and I, I attribute that to Silver Logan Sharp. Oh, okay. Silver Logan Sharp, he he needed an engineer mm -hmm. for uh for uh for a show here at DC. He needed 
and she recommended me. He called me. I ended up doing the show. Mm -hmm. After the show, he liked it. He said, you do anything bigger? I said, yeah. Uh -huh. So I was on the road for like four years. Wow. Isn't that and something? I went from doing this engineer, and then I ended up being this production manager for, for a while. It was fun. No singing for him, though? You know something? He found that I sang probably later. Uh -huh. Later down the road. Mm -hmm. He found that I sang. You know, he, he's like, because the thing about <laughs> it, when he came, when she came to town, uh -huh. I think the next year when he came to town, Silver sang. This is how he found out. Silver sang, um, came up and sat in. Mm -hmm. And she said, you don't know who you got on working for you. And then she brought me upstairs mm -hmm. and sang a little bit with her, and it was fun. And he was like, what? He was like, I had this under my belt all this time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You know he's always say, man, we get you up to here to do some singing. Now. Mm -hmm. We never really dove into that, but yeah. But I got his number, though. Okay. I'm going to call you. All right. I might be able to collab on something. Hey, I always tell him, he, man, he is so down to earth. So down to earth. He, if you told him, I say, hey, man, I got a song. He's like, all right, man, let's, let's do it. Mm -hmm. That's how he is. Nice. So he, he's kind of waiting for me. Mm -hmm. So that's let's how make this do. happen. Let's make it happen. Now, so that's a good segue into, you said that your, your strategy for your CD or, or your project is that you want to release singles and then, mm -hmm. um, and so are you like every month you're going to release singles or are you going to, how are you going to stagger hey, the release? You know how fast these things come out? It's, once, once you get going, it could be, I could do probably a week. You can release it a week. Oh my gracious! Once, once, you, once you get going, you know you can really go for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so we probably spread them out pretty much. You know, probably do once one a month or something like that. You know. Well, I'm you know I'm I'm actually ready to hear um, at least. Something. Yes, yes. So we're so first we're gonna we want to do um, we want to do best friends first with the uh, performance track, or do you want to do reasons uh, with the uh, accompaniment? Well. Let's just do something. We just jump into something. Oh, you know, just gonna let it flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. All right, well, we just gonna you know jump right in and. Let me get my keyboard. It's a shout out. Yes. Mr. Mike Pryor. Mike Pryor Mike in Pryor. the house. Mike Pryor Jr. Are we gonna be able to see? Are we gonna be able to show him at all? There oh, we go. Yeah. You got him already. See. You in there? See for those What's that up? are watching. It's Mike Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Can give you a little something if you want. Yeah, let's do. Uh, let me see how you. Let's see how it sounds. Hello. We got a live studio audience in the house. <laughs> Check on his mic. Yeah. So you say you never had nobody sit right here and sing, huh? No, not you know, and I'm stand, I'm on, on camera, <laughs> putting me on the spot. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. same reason I'm loving you for a reason throughout all the season this has been bugging me I'm leaving for the same reason Listen. time and time I ask myself that why my love is going so bad is that the way things are supposed to be? Girl, you know that I'm a gentleman And leaving was not in my plans I thought this love would last 
for eternity Cause I'm loving you for a reason Throughout all these seasons This has been bugging me I'm leaving for the same reason I'm loving you for a reason Throughout all the seasons This has been bugging me I'm leaving for the same reason when I look into your pretty brown eyes Something strange came to my surprise Can you see the thing that I see? I'm not used to living by myself So I have to go and do something else It is hard for you, but it is killing me I remember the time when leaving you wasn't on my mind Can't figure out just where we went wrong Because of you I'm a better man <laughs> And that is why I can understand I'm here today but tomorrow I'll be Loving you for a reason Throughout all the seasons This has been bugging me I'm leaving for the same reason I'm loving you for a reason Throughout all the seasons This has been bugging me I'm leaving for the same reason you know, I'm loving you, leaving you, loving you, I'm leaving you, I'm loving you, loving you, loving, loving you, <laughs> but I'm leaving you, leaving you, leaving you, leaving you. <laughs> Absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. Look, Mike is like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like all oh, flushed over here. See, this is why I don't like being on the camera. When I'm it's just all like, huh, it's all that was beautiful. Your tone is so beautiful. And the range. Oh, I fake it out a little bit. Yeah, okay, fake it out. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, now I got to try to get my thoughts together. Uh, where do we go from here? Let's take a quick commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where do we go from here? We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back. Can we do another song? Of course. All right, we're going to do another song, and then uh, a few more questions, and that'll be it. Stay tuned. <laughs>
My heart can stand another one. Just back to back, we're going to play the love song. No, this song is called Let Go. It's called Let Go. <laughs> the love song. <laughs> you know, it is a love song. The song is entitled Let Go. Sometimes you need to let go of a lot about a bunch of things that's in your life. We're talking about letting go of that person or thing that you don't like, but you can let go of a lot of things, but it's called like this. The things he do. You know you don't deserve it The way he treats you He's not the one to spend your life with He's hurting you Even though it doesn't show I'm only telling you The things you have to know Hey, that you got to Strong and let go. Know the one thing that hurts you the most. Pack your bags, girl, and leave there today. Don't look back, girl, everything will be okay. You are a star Selling high above the earth Girl, that's what you are He doesn't know your worth Go ahead and cry It's okay to shed a tear It's gonna be alright yeah. As long as you that you got to be strong and let go Know the one thing that hurts you the most Pack your bags, girl, and leave here today Don't look back, girl, everything will be okay so you got to be strong and let go, yeah. Not the one thing that hurts you the most, yeah. Pack your bags, girl, and leave here today. Don't look back, girl, everything will be okay. Sometimes we do have to let go when it ain't working out. Hey. Hey. Thinking it's going to change. It's been too much time. Yep. That's all right. Got to let it like go. That, like that. Yeah, that's all right. That is nice, right? Look, Jay, is, Jay very rarely comments. Oh, that is nice. Go play that day, Mike. Oh, Mike Fry, y'all. It is. <laughs> now, so, have you had any training, or did you, did you go to um, like training? school for the arts, or? I wasn't that fortunate, but no, I didn't have it. Just all God-given talent. Yeah, I mean, but I can say that you know, once you, I was under a very, 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 very great uh, musical director in, in the church where I was. Was um, if anybody knows, he's uh, I used to sing with his group called Phase Two. Mm -hmm. No, phase one, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Phase two is the jazz group. Um, yeah, phase one, and uh, his name is Mr. Kenneth Lewis. He was a minister of music uh, at the church and at a young age, and I learned a lot from him, mm -hmm. you know, as far as, you know, but as far as, you know, being able to control your vocals and everything, and, you know, that's what I learned from him. But formally training, mm -hmm. no. No, okay. I've never had a formal training. 
Okay. And so with your project that's coming out, do you, have you, um, you, you wrote all of the songs? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful lyrics. Yes. I wrote Are all we, the songs, but I have different producers come in, you know, and actually produced on the song. Okay, so are we speaking from experience with the let go? Care to see, share? See, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> see, I knew what was going to happen when I came on the show, so that's why I wear my sunglasses. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's some of the songs that I say I get kind of emotional. I don't want y'all to see me t crying and tearing up and on here, so I'm going to just go ahead and keep a glasses on soon. See, see, that's not even fair because I didn't have I'm not just doing glasses. it just to be cool. I didn't have I didn't I'm have not doing glasses. it just to be cool. I wasn't just on, warned. Sure, just a little bit trying to be cool, but the rest of it is like, <laughs> you know, it'll have been kind of crazy to start singing and then put the glasses on. No, I just leave more so you think it's okay. part of the problem. So how, tell people how they can stay connected with you, like follow I'm on, you. I'm on all social medias. You know something? As all of these careers, as uh, long as I've been doing this, I never had a website. Mm -hmm. I use the social media. Social media, get your pages together and, and add your friends. Follow me on all social media. Twitter is Zoe Miller. Instagram is Zoe Miller. Lorenzo Zoe Miller on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I post everything on there. I post all my shows and everything. So if you want to come out and see a Zoe Miller show, you can come to see Mike Pride live. You know, so post it on there. We'll, we'll be ready. Now, so I noticed um, this morning that you you've reached your max on your fa on your uh, Facebook page. So are you going? And this is my dilemma. I'm trying to decide. Do I? I just don't want to have to administer two pages what are you gonna do i i administer two pages you know and but it's yeah you know, i have to go through there man if just send me a message send me an inbox message if i can't add me i will make space for you all right i'll you make space it. for you, you i'll make it. space for you because let's say hey we saw you on wendy's show on, yes Andy i saw your wendy show i need to be your friend there you i'll go. make some space for you because you know I know I've never been through that. A lot of times I just go in there and I just start clicking yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them are not real people. Right. So I can go back. I, I said I'm going to go back and clean that up. Mm -hmm. But send me a message. I'll clean that up and I'll add you. We need real people. Okay. Real people. So now how soon can we um, anticipate this next the next release? Hey, I'm Mike, when, when you want to release it? Tomorrow? <laughs> we can release that tomorrow. Give Man. us give us a few weeks. We we they, we you'll start to hear stuff about it, man. Definitely, weeks, we have to now. In terms of your release, are you um, now? Some people, you know, they like to go through like CD Baby and then go through all the digital media outlets for their to release their music. Some people do websites, which is fine to keep all the the money in house. How do you plan on releasing your music? Well, we're gonna do we could probably do the release. You know, iTunes. You can go in there and you can get your account with the iTunes, and you can. They sell it for like 99 cents mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, okay. we're probably going to do it that way. And we're going to have them printed up. So I will have my trunk open. Oh. <laughs> you know what I always said? And, and this is, I know when the time comes, I'll probably chicken out. And I'll, we talk about fear and not letting fear paralyze you from moving forward. But I just, whenever whenever I finish this project, with my project, which will be sometime in the summer, mm -hmm. I to go out on the streets like with my have my performance track and just sing my song hey i've, I've seen that done I, I've, but i don't want to do it for the you know not i don't for the love. yes for the love and just to have fun and to meet people let me tell you something let me tell you something um this mo jazz wednesday thing you know that I, especially when i started this time i'm doing this at zero dollars mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, I know that in the long run that it's going to take some money, but the thing about it, I'm not looking to get rich off of it. None of us are looking to get rich off of none of these gigs we do here locally. Right. Basically, if you do a gig here locally, you're doing it for the love. Mm -hmm. You're doing it for the love, and you know, and like me, I come out here, I'll, I'll, like you say, you want to set up somewhere. If I can get the musicians together, I'll go up and set up right here on Georgia Avenue, uh -huh. set up stage, put sound, lights, and everything, and put on a show. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, a lot of times I think about the money later. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think about it later. You know, I it'll come. People know, you know, I I sacrifice and I I give, you know, I give up my time and, and things. You know, if you really need it, I'll give it to you. Right. You know, and that's what it's all about. Right. Well, it's, it's a blessing that you feel that way because a lot of folks don't. But you'll get yours back to it'll, three, come, it'll come back. It'll come back. It, it, ha it, it, it always comes back. It, it has come back. It's, it's a couple of times over. Right. You know, 
I've been blessed. I've been very blessed. And a lot of times, and, you know, I sit around and with nothing, no gigs or nothing, and they say, you know, I'm on a tour. Mm-hmm. Like this last tour, I was on four months. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. Well, you know, when you come back, and and I have a segment where I showcase artists. Um, maybe you just do like a whole thirty minute set. Hey, we can do that because you know I have. We can set up. We can make this thing look like uh, no, Capital Center. Are you talking about lights? <laughs> you know, you have your okay. your set set look like Capital Center. I bring the lights, the smoke machine, and everything in here. Okay, well, definitely <laughs> got to come back. So we have to end the show. Um, I I thank you guys. I thank you. I really oh, appreciate pleasure. you my taking pleasure. the time to come. Pleasure, Michael. Thank you so much. My man, Mike Pryor. Thank you, Mike Pryor. Um, the Set Your Mind, Set Your Week quote comes from our own Kevin Williams. Kevin is out sick today. Sorry, Kevin. Hope you feel better. But he says, the grass is greener where you water it. And again, that mm. it means, you know, again, invest in yourself. Like you know, that. start with home. Create your, opportun- your own opportunities. You'll be amazed at what comes out of it. Whether it be, you know, financial will come. But, you know, the network, collaborations, different people that you meet. So invest in yourself and create your own opportunities. There you go. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week. Stay tuned. Uh, each and every Friday, I mean Saturday at 5 o'clock, the Indie Boy Show. Love you guys. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate you.